friends, this is Jennifer from Decor Sauce, and thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I do have another floor for you today. I know I do a lot of floors, and behind me is yet another one. So the project I'm gonna be completing for you today is I'm gonna be refinishing my plywood subfloor that I just removed carpet out of my photography studio. So the carpet was really nasty. It's all original in this, in this home, and so it's just gross. And I would replace them all, but it's just really expensive to do so. So the room behind me is 266 square feet and would cost about $600 if I decided to do like a interlocking vinyl or something like that and that's on the cheaper side guys without installation that's me doing it myself and paying about $1.99 a square foot so um, when I was looking at that and trying to decide what kind of look I wanted in my studio I really realized that I really don't want the floor to make any kind of statement at, at all I just want it to be kind of rustic kind of white that way I can bring in different rugs and floors and props and things like that so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be painting my plywood subfloor and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute and I've never done this before so I'm really really excited for you guys to follow along with me so with that being said let's get started all right so now I'm in the middle of my studio and I'm sorry it's really echoey because I removed the carpet and the ceilings are high so um, I'm just gonna pan around the room and show you what it looks like now and I'll, and I'll hit the floors too so you can see what those look like I did remove the carpet and if you have never removed carpet it before I do have a tutorial for that on my channel so make sure you check that out too um, because I didn't show that for this process um, but here is the floor here's the room and the floor and as you saw it is not a particle board plywood it's actually a nice probably pine plywood subfloor and so I think it'll look really pretty once I give it its treatment and I really don't mind the look of some of the wood grain coming through. I think that'll be kind of cool, so I'm not gonna mess with that too much. So before I get to filling the cracks with the wood putty, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the perimeter in any rough spots with my orbital sander. It looks like this. And um, I'm just gonna use a, I'm gonna actually use an extra coarse grit and I'm gonna hit all the construction adhesives and plaster and things like that around the perimeter of the room. And make sure I just get a nice, smooth surface for painting and if there's any really rough spots I'm going to go ahead and use my belt sander and this is for seriously getting down to the wood so this is going to be for like adhesives and things like that that won't come up with the orbital sander at least won't come up easily and then after that I'm going to do a little quick cleanup because it, the floor needs to be nice and clean before you put the wood filler in and then um, I'll be ready to fill those fill those holes and I'll show you what that looks like when it comes up So now I have the floor sanded and ready for me to use my wood filler. Um, I did end up sanding the whole floor only because there was a lot of overspray from the build of the house and I wanted to make sure that my surface was completely smooth for painting. So I did go ahead and sand the whole thing. And now I'm ready to apply my wood filler and I'll post the link below so you can see what that is exactly. And I'm just gonna use it on the cracks and I'll scroll down here so you can see so as you can see, there's these cracks here. I'm just gonna use a little bit of the wood filler to fill the cracks, and that way my paint's still gonna seep down in the crack a little bit, but it'll make sure that it, it, it has just a cleaner line when it's painted. Also, I wanna say while I'm doing this, I'm also going to pay attention to any nails that might need to be tapped in a little bit lower into the subfloor and do that as well as fill those nail holes with the wood putty as well. Just that way I'll have a more uniform look. So I am done filling all the cracks and the nail holes with the wood putty and um, I just wanted to mention too, don't forget if you had carpet in your room before, don't forget to fill in the holes where the tack strips were too. So not only did I do any nails holding down the subfloor, I also did around all the way around the edges too and that way I don't have any noticeable holes. And I'm getting ready to sand them now because they've dried for a couple hours and I'm gonna be using a sanding sponge like this one. It is a, um, I think it's a fine grit, not an extra fine, just a regular fine grit. And I'm gonna show you what the floor looks like all patched up. So here's what the patching looks like. And 
you can see I patched all the holes around the edges and all of the cracks. I'll get in close so you can kind of see that. And now it's just time to sand. The reason why I'm using a sanding block or a sanding sponge here instead of the orbital sander is because I did really, really thin, light coats of the wood filler. So when you do this, just make sure you do really light coats just like you would on the wall so you have very, very little sanding and not a lot of, you just have to basically knock it down smooth and you don't have a lot of goopy leftovers to really dig down in. So I am now basically at the end of day one and the only thing I have left to do now for today is I'm going to cut and roll on my first coat of primer. I'm not sure how many coats I'm gonna do yet. We'll have to see what it looks like after it dries in the morning, but the primer I'm going to be using is Bin 123 or Zinser 123 Bullseye Primer. And I just have to cut around the edges using a three inch paintbrush like this. And then I'm just gonna roll on the paint. And floors are super easy to roll, guys. So that's why even though it's late or it's nighttime, I'm gonna go ahead and do it right now because it won't take me very long once I get everything cut to go ahead and roll it. And then I'll show you what it looks like once it's all dry in the morning. day two and I just wanted to show you what the floor looks like now it's just got the first coat of primer on it dry and I am gonna go for the second coat of primer but I wanted to show you what it looks like now so let me just get out of the way here so you can see it so it looks pretty good I think but there is some lines still showing and things like that and so I think one more coat of primer will just be the best thing so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take care of that second coat and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I did wanna mention, I, you probably wondered when I did the first coat why I did it wonky like this. And the reason, instead of just going straight into the room, and the reason was because I was going with the grain of the wood. Now, I don't know how much it's going to matter in this case, but I know that wood generally behaves much, much better if you go with the grain. So that's why I painted it this way instead of straight on because I was going with the grain of wood. So just something to keep in mind for your floor. So my second coat of primer has been drying all day and I'm getting ready to apply my final coat, which is the paint coat. And the paint I'm going to be using this time is the Valspar Porchin Floor Latex. And I'm just gonna use a water-based paint this time. Normally I would um, use an oil base for a floor. And in fact, I consider that the gold standard, but I'm getting ready to do a newborn shoot in this room. And so I just don't want it to, ha I don't wanna have the volatile um, odor for about three weeks. <laughs> That's about how long it lasts when you use oil-based paint. So normally I would do oil-based, but because I'm doing a baby shoot in here, I'm gonna want it to not, not have that, <laughs> that kind of odor for very long. So I wanna show you what it looks like after it's been drying with a primer. It looks awesome. I'm really happy with it. And I'm ex very excited to give it the final coat um, because the final coat will have a glossy finish to it. So right now it's very matte, which I do like a lot, but I think that the glossy will just kick it up a notch and it'll really look a lot more fancy. So, and I also wanted to tell you before I get started that for this final paint coat, I'm going to be using a tray and a tray liner like this because I do not want to be painting it on really thick, which you tend to do if you pour it straight on the floor. So I'm gonna be using that. And then for my feet, I'm going to be wearing socks. 
and that will just keep my feet from depositing any oils in between the primer and the paint and also make sure I don't make any scuff marks or anything like that in the floor because it's it is dry to the touch but it isn't cured yet and it won't be cured for probably at least a week all the way up to three weeks. So I wanna be very careful with it and treat it very delicately until then. So I'm finally moved back into my photography studio and I'm really excited to share the big reveal with you and to talk to you a little bit about how it's been wearing the last couple of months since it's been finished. Um, first of all, it looks so amazing. I'm so happy that I did it and I'm actually considering doing my whole hallway in the upstairs just as a kind of bridge until I can actually replace the floor with something more permanent. But I'm so happy with the way it looks. I think it looks so amazing that I'm planning on, on doing it actually in my hallway too. So that's the first thing to note. Um, secondly, I know that I told you that I did it with latex paint and I, I know that gold standard is the oil-based paint, but I didn't use it because I was having a newborn shoot in here and I regret it, guys. So if you do this project, make sure that you do it with an oil-based paint, even if it's not a porch and floor base. I know that uh, some of my friends in Ohio and family had trouble finding the oil-based porch and floor paint at their local big box store. So if you can't find the oil-based porch and floor, then it's okay to go with something else. Just make sure it's oil-based because it is the gold standard. It will wear the best. I already don't love how it's wearing as compared to some of my other painted floors in the house that have been done for several years with oil-based and just the cleanup is easier. I can use bleach on them. I can wipe them. I can do all kinds of stuff that already this floor is more delicate being the latex. So the third thing, and this applies to any painted floor, whether you use latex or oil base, make sure that you don't lay any rugs with a rubber backing on the floor that's painted. And the rubber will have a reaction, a chemical reaction with your paint on the floor and it will yellow your floors and it doesn't go away. So just make sure that if you do a painted floor, whether it's linoleum or wood or whatever it is, that you don't put any, that you make sure your rugs are cotton backed just because otherwise uh, I learned that the hard way on one of my bathroom floors. So just a good tip for you so you don't learn the hard way too. Too, so you already know all of the products that I use or mention in the video will be posted in the links below in the description box So if you are curious as to anything I used make sure you check out those links below So if you watch my channel, you know, I have tons of DIYs on floors But if you don't watch my channel make sure that you check out some of my other great floor tutorials And I really appreciate you watching if you guys would please like subscribe and Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new posts, which normally happen on Fridays. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and have a happy DIY.